Welcome to our Real Talks segment of the Share Podcast, where we talk about sex, relationships, and culture. I am your host, Carl. I'm the director of the Share Program with our lovely co-host, Cassia. I am the Share Assistant. And she's awesome. And again, we are joined with our Center Operations Director, Sarah Gilman. Sarah, thank you for having a Real Talk with us. Oh, of course. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So we are... It's it's still Christmas time, I'm pretty Yay. sure. Woot woot. Yes it is. Yes. Feliz Navidad. Da 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 Feliz Navidad. Ba da 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 We're gonna go on the road with Feliz Navidad, just so you guys know. Tune in uh for our next podcast where we come to you live from the Coca Cola Center in Toronto. Oh my. Uh that's that's a fabrication. <laughs> That's not true. Full on lie. <laughs> Full on fabrication. We call them fabrications and uh, because we believe in grace. <laughs> yes, we do. If you listen to our act, like the podcast, that's a lot about what we talked about at Christmas. We did. We talked about having grace and showing grace and being kind, which is lovely. Heralding back again to our last podcast, we were talking about like the Virgin Mary, the Virgin Birth, kind of the stigma that goes along with that. And I've heard... Um, from the community that a majority of people think that uh, unplanned pregnancies, which <laughs> surprise Virgin Mary, 100% unplanned kind of angel just showed up and was like, guess what? You're going to be pregnant. And she was like, what? Just like that? Just like that. It was <laughs> wow. like, Mary, <laughs> you going to be pregnant, girl. <laughs> and Mary was like, Pardon, what, what now? Exactly. I've never heard it told like that before. It's in the um, New York version. Yeah. It's the, it's the Samuel sense. L. Jackson vers- version of the gospel, <laughs> the SLJ. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Can we go through the whole story like yeah, that Yeah, we'll now? go through the whole story like that. Just imagine Samuel L. Jackson reading the gospel. It's fantastic. <laughs> the SLJ version. Um, <laughs> I would definitely get that translation. That sounds fun. Um, back on task. <laughs> we were talking about... Um, unexpected pregnancy and how the community for uh, for a lot of the community think that oh well that's a that's a teenage problem um but that's actually not what we experience in our clinic uh sarah can you talk to us more about that yeah definitely most people come to at well with this understanding or not clients per se but donors and the community with this understanding that yeah unexpected pregnancy happens to teenagers because they're reckless careless Mm -hmm. um they don't know their different parts of their body. They don't know how pregnancy works. They don't know the female anatomy or the male anatomy. And um, it's not the case. Um, Most of our clients are between the ages of 25 and 35. I'm not to say that pregnancies within teenagers don't happen and they are definitely unexpected. Um, But the clients that we see at Hotwell are wrestling with the choice around their pregnancy and what they're going to do with it now that they know that they are pregnant. We find a lot of teens um, choose to carry, especially here in Hamilton, um, because they themselves are a child of a teen mom and Mm. know it's possible or just want to have the baby and Mm. put themselves in that position on purpose. Um, And so we find a lot of our clients between yeah, the ages like again of twenty five and thirty five, and and not just poor people. You know, people always think, oh well, it happens to the poor because you know they don't plan as well or something like that. It's all lies. You yeah. know, um, you know, pregnancy shakes up and puts anybody into crisis, no matter yeah. who you are, and even if you want it or not, right? You know, like I remember when we when my husband and I found out we were pregnant, like we definitely or expecting to be Mm -hmm. pregnant, but it's still a shock. Like, (laughs) oh my, what did we do? (laughs) You know? And so it it just, it takes a lot of time to process and think. And yeah, that's what we do. And we see professionals of all walks of life and in all career choices. We see students, we see, yeah, professionals. And so it's not just a teen problem. Mm -hmm. And in, um, in, in definitely not in, in Halton. People think um, that is the case, but when we looked at stats, it's not the case at all. Yeah, and I think that's important to like kind of take that stigma 
off of like, oh, well, this is just a teenage problem. I think yeah. it's a, it's a, it's, and this is why it's a people know, problem. It's a people problem, 100%. And it needs to be an ongoing conversation because like unplanned pregnancy that can happen across the board. And so yep. one of the things that we do in, in the SHARE program when we go into schools, we talk about, you know, the risks of pregnancy. Um, we talk about uh, the different, the ways that young people can protect themselves. And with our parents, we talk about how to keep this conversation ongoing. Um, because again, it's, it's not just, it's not just a teen issue. It's a, it's an issue across the board. And if you want, if you do want to go back and listen to the podcast from last week, we really get into that a little bit more. And I really recommend you guys, you know, listening to that podcast. Um, it was, it was really good. Very funny, but very informative. Yeah. We had a lot of laughs. We had a lot of laughs. It was, (laughs) we'll see how many Lucy cut out. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see how, if. Which camera I'm looking at? Where are you, Lucy? <laughs> Whichever ones that uh, you cut out from us, Lucy. Yeah, well, and I, I think just something that is important to recognize, we were talking about teens. Mm-hmm. And and in, in our last podcast, we were talking a lot about grace. And I think one thing that's important to highlight is that your kid, your teens won't divulge information just out of just because they want to like they don't want to right like they want to they want to be asked intentional questions and not like yes no questions and i think like that's the greatest gift you probably can give yourself and your kid this christmas Mm -hmm. or teen or children or whatever like i remember when i was 15 i was at a christian bookstore and i opened this book it was like how to raise christian teens and i was like (laughs) who's writing this book? They're probably not even a teenager. teenager. I have no idea what they're talking about, right? Like, So I opened the front cover and it was like, number one, ask your teenagers questions because they will not like tell you information just out of the goodness of their heart. And I was like, okay, this is a good book. And I put it back, <laughs> <laughs> put it back on the shelf and I was like, it can be sold. It yeah, can be sold. It can be this sold. Is like, this is allowed. Like, Because I remember being like, oh, I don't know if they want me to tell them this or I don't know if I should share this or if I'm weird for sharing this, but asking questions is so important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that that was, that was another one of our questions for the podcast is like, what can you get your teenager for Christmas? Right. It's like a lot of parents are thinking, Oh, well, what do I get my teen? I don't know what to do or what to get. Or at least that's my mom (laughs) would always ask, what do you want? (laughs) And a lot of the times they just, they just want to spend time. They just want, if you can give your teenager one thing this 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 Christmas, it's ask them some questions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, be intentional. Mm-hmm. And I know that in our society too, things that a teenager wants slash needs can be really expensive, right? Yeah. iPhones, computers, iPads, Air PlayStations. Forces. Like all. Air what, Forces. That's what my brother wanted. What was that? The whole Air Force. The, the shoe. Oh, oh the Air Force shoe. sneaker. The shoe. Yeah, gotcha. sneakers are a big thing right now. Yeah. Right? They're all, <laughs> they're really expensive. And I also remember being a teenager and getting like mm-hmm. a bath towel and being like, what? this is ridiculous. <laughs> but like, oh it is like a huge sheet towel. And I love it so much now in my adulthood. But yeah. when I yeah. was 17, I was like, what is this? What, is what am this? I going to do with Why this? Why do I have this? But yeah, it's being it's being an intentional with yeah. your teenagers and making like time to make memories and remembering mm-hmm. that even though they act like little adults, they're kids and yeah. they want to have fun and they want to have those like Christmas memories mm-hmm. and like even be if in the moment for. they don't appreciate it in the future, right? Like you don't yeah. remember what you got on the Christmas of your fifteenth year no. you remember what you did and yeah. the time you spent with the family yeah like making a snowman or going building snow forts or snowball mm-hmm. fights yeah. like i remember my dad doing those things with me and those are happy memories and 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 it's also okay to ask your teens um how will what 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 kind of time would you like to spend together because not all kids are like outgoing or extroverts. Some some kids are introverts. Yeah. So so sometimes that you know, it's it's okay to ask them. Okay, I I want to spend time with you. I want to create you know some time with us together this holiday season. What, what does that look like for you? And yeah, it's that's okay. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah, and it's okay for some because some students or or teenagers might be like, actually, it would be great if I could just have like two hours by myself. <laughs> That's great. Let's give them time alone. Maybe like write them a letter for them to read. Yeah. yeah. Or and then just like give them that time and that space. 
um, because they're processing so much. Well, and love like, like, you know, love languages and personality Mm -hmm. quizzes and those things are, you know, rampant these days. And, you know, somebody at work told me the other day, I really appreciate how you really try to work on understanding everybody's individual personality and then how you communicate with them differently. And I said, well, I, I respect everybody as an individual, so they're going to need communication in a different, you know, way. Yeah. And so that that's how your teenagers are too, right? Like my sisters and I, I have three younger sisters. We all communicate very differently. And so it's really important to have my parents understand that and what quality time or quantity of time looks like and what each one of us needs, because that's going to go a lot further um, than, you know, the newest playstations or air forces or whatever. Even like we talked about in our last episode. um, So often with Christmas, we get focused on spending money and what gifts you need. And it just becomes a whole almost production but sometimes like the best memories are the simplest things like making a gingerbread house or my family would go on a drive and just look at Christmas lights. Like it doesn't right. have to be a big expensive gift or dinner or outing, just doing something that all of you will enjoy. Right. Yeah. Well, and I think that goes back to the importance of tradition. Mm-hmm. And I think like you can even look at that way back into the b- biblical times. Like why did, why is tradition so important year after year in, in biblical culture and today It's because it makes something so simple, something to look forward to mm-hmm. and something precious and you build your memories around that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so it can be something, you know, you can start a new Christmas tradition. It could be making your own ornaments. It could be, yeah, driving around doing Christmas lights it's you know and then it's just something that you do and then like even last episode uh cassia you were talking about how you and your fiance were taking time away from your phones so maybe it's like a phone free christmas drive yeah right you know like it and just being there being real uh with your with your teens yeah and and i think that when we talk about gifts any gift that you give will eventually fade like the, there will always be a new iPhone. There will always be a new game system. There will always be, you know, sneakers will always get holes in them. But I think that <laughs> won't, what won't fade are memories. Yeah. And like facilitating and creating spaces where you can f- create memories with your teenager this Christmas is is amazing. I remember some of the, the most memorable Christmases I've had when I was a young young man was not because of what I got physically like as like um, as a monetary gift but what the time that i got to spend with my family Mm -hmm. or or the time that i felt heard Mm -hmm. or the time that somebody like sat down and like asked me what was going on and like really listened and that was that Mm -hmm. those are the things and those are the christmases that i remember the most um and so although it might feel awkward facilitating those spaces and 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 taking risks and uh reaching out to your teenager even if even if they're like this is weird i don't i'm not sure (laughs) don't give up on it right away like obviously if 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 you're 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 offering something and it's like kind you kind of get a little bit of hesitation once or twice give some space that's okay don't feel what bad about that you can try again later you can try again later yeah, don't force them to spend time with you. That's that's one thing. Yeah, don't be like we are going to in the car and we are going to have a good time. That's no. That's well, scary. and I think that's scary. when you had said like, <laughs> what do you like? How do you want this time to look like? Right, mm-hmm. right. Like putting a little bit of onus on them mm-hmm. and making them have a little bit more ownership mm-hmm. in the idea will help them buy into it. Yeah. At least that's what helped me when I was in high school. Yeah. One one little little tip for our parents and educators, if you let them believe and, and not only let them believe, but actually give them the choice to make those decisions, it will be much better, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hear we whisper. I don't know. I'm just it's a little tip. <laughs> I don't know. Secrets. For any teenagers that are listening, I'm trying I'm sorry I'm giving away your secrets, but like yeah. Just let them have that 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 up. Autonomy and power to make those decisions themselves. It's great, and it can be really simple. Like mm-hmm. we're going out for fast food, so do you want E and W or you want Wendy's? Right? Like, it's yeah, a, you know, like just just something that makes them feel individualized and heard. 
right? It, it can be, you can it's choose massive. like we're going yeah. here. Would you like to pick up Starbucks or Tim Hortons on the way? Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Like it's kind of like, you know, this is what we're doing, but here you have some choice in it. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of choices and like, what are you doing? And like, what do you want to do? A lot of activities happen around the Christmas season. And some of those activities involve Christmas parties. Mm -hmm. And so what I want to shift us to is now talking about, because we have a question um, that we've gotten in, and that the question is, how can people stay safe at holiday parties? So I'd love to hear both of you and your thoughts, especially you, Cassia, being uh, the youngest of all of us. Uh, (laughs) What are some of your thoughts on like how specifically – um, young people can stay safe at Christmas parties and how parents can have those conversations with their with their young people. Well, I think a big thing, especially if it's like a college or high school party, is often there's drinking involved um, or substances or things which can impair people's states of mind. So if you're at a party, whether you go into it knowing that there may be drinking or substances or you go in unaware and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, this is happening and I was not prepared for this, um, it can be really helpful to go with someone else or make sure, like, text a couple of friends and be like, hey, like, this party's going on. Is anyone else going? Um, mm-hmm. And if you don't know anyone else, else going, let a friend you trust know that you're going or let your parents know, hey, like, I'm going to a party here. Not sure if I'll know anyone. You know, can you just, like, keep your phone on in case something happens and I can shoot mm-hmm. you a text? Um, on the iPhone, you can, like, share your location with someone for, like, an hour or for a night or something that can be a really good tool, especially if it's somewhere where you're maybe unfamiliar, not sure who's going. Mm -hmm. Um, If you are at a party and like you're drinking anything or eating anything, I would highly recommend that you like keep eyes on your cup. Or if you don't know, like you leave it somewhere or walk away, come back, maybe don't drink it and go pour a new one. Mm -hmm. Um, There's a lot of things that can be poured into drinks that can alter it. Um, Date rape drugs are sometimes referred to as right where it, um, inhibits your, what's the word? Your senses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just yeah, your, awareness. your reactions, yeah. your awareness. Thank you. That's the word. Um, which can lead to not great situations, right? Especially when other people are under the influence and not always mm-hmm. thinking clearly. Um, and even just being aware of like other people going on at the party, like maybe you're there with a group of friends and you're having a great time, but you kind of see that, you know, a girl and a guy are in the corner and she seems kind of uncomfortable or he seems kind of uncomfortable go say something, you know, check in, be like, hey, like everything okay? Or like, I know for girls, it's like the unspoken girl code. You act like your best friend. You're like, hey, we have to go take a picture. Like, let's walk over here. And you pull the girl aside and say like, hey, everything okay? Like come be part of our tribe. I don't know if it's the same with guys, but with girls (sighs) growing up, right? That's always kind of been the unspoken thing. Like we're all in this together. Like whether we've known each other for 20 years or met like five minutes ago, just keep an eye out and like try and keep everyone safe and be aware of what's going on. Well, and I think it's important to not get caught up in the mania of Christmas, mm-hmm. right? Like we at the SHARE program, we talk about the different uh, types of love and, and mania is that like all encompassing, like high love, right, Carl? Yep. And uh, which Christmas is full of, yes. right? And so- social media is full of, movies are full of. And so when you go to a Christmas party, you make come to this realization and think that it's going to feel or mm-hmm. be a certain way. And when it's not, you're not wrong. Like yeah. you're not wrong for feeling the way you're feeling. Like, cause if you're not feeling that mania that you think you should be feeling, you should listen to your feelings. Like if you feel uncomfortable, then you're uncomfortable. Yeah. Like don't, don't like yeah. wish that uncomfortableness away. And then also like, you know, we, in, in the holiday songs and, and culture, they have the mistletoe everywhere. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and if you get caught under the mistletoe, you better kiss or else like there's going to be like some Christmas curse or something, but you know, Krampus. <laughs> there's not, there's, and yeah. there's no such thing. Consent doesn't go away at Christmas. No, it doesn't. And I think that's really yes. important that consent doesn't go away from Christmas. And if you don't feel the mania of Christmas, you're not bad mm-hmm. for feeling that yeah. like, teenagers if you're listening like you need to give yourself permission that if you're not feeling the christmas Mm -hmm. mania you're not weird yeah like you're normal and that's okay like that's a good thing like god gave you these senses for a reason so that's like just super important and and it's also important 
parents now talking to you guys to talk to your teenagers about these things Mm -hmm. and definitely to inform them and let them know like and and a lot of us will be feel hesitant to have these conversations but when you have these conversations it actually empowers your 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 student and it it shows them that you trust them enough as a as a young adult to begin to make these decisions and choices um within a safe space because you know like i i I love what kathy cassia said like if you're talking if your student wants to go if your young teenager wants to go to a party um it's okay to be like yeah sure i will text you within in two hours at this time just to check in just let me know just text me back like i'm not trying to be weird or i'm not trying to you know in, in, in encroach upon your social time but like as your parent like a, taking care of you is kind of my responsibility well, so even like yeah. if your teen actually is up front with you and tells you mm-hmm. that they're going to a christmas party with their friends yeah thanks for telling me that yeah right if you guys need a ride or a, anything happens mm-hmm. and like you need me to come pick you up let me know rather than right because a lot of yeah. teens don't want to tell their parents they're going to a party because they're like oh the first reaction is going to be well no you shouldn't go are there going to be drugs is there going to be alcohol is there going to be boys like right and it just kind yeah. of shuts it down and makes your teen think oh well i need to hide this and be like oh yeah i'm going to sleep over at my best friend's house definitely not going to a party whereas yeah. then <laughs> it opens the door for so much to happen right you could yeah. get in a car with someone who's been drinking rather than being able to like call mom or dad and be like hey like actually i went to this party I thought I had a ride home. Turns out I don't. Can yeah. you come pick me up, right? And I, I, I think like I'm not a, a mom, but I would think that any mom or dad would say they would have rather had a phone call than from their, yep. their son or daughter than from the police officer, yeah. right? Like yeah. because of an accident. Yep. And so, you know, there we again, we have to take away the shame yep. of the conversations. It's today's culture. It's today's youth. Mm-hmm. Parties are a thing. And we, when our teens start to open up about things that they're encountering in culture, Mm -hmm. whether that's going to a Christmas party, there needs to be grace and there needs to be an opportunity to just talk through it. What are your thoughts? What are your plans? Have you, you know, I'm sure there was times when my friends and I were talking to my mom and inside she was just like, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? But she was so good at just like letting us talk to her and we would go to mom and be like, Hey mom. There's this new slang on the street. We think you should know what it is so that if my brother and his friends ever try to like pull one past you, you know what's going on. But it was because she had created that space where we could go to her and tell her, hey, like this is what this means or this is what happened at so-and-so's party and talk to her. And it wasn't like, oh, well, you guys went to that party. Now like X, Y, and Z is going to happen. But like letting your kids come to you and Mm -hmm. talk and not just like shame them like we've been talking about so much, right? And also it's in 100%. And, and it's also important to understand that like this is the first for a lot of people like Christmas time after COVID. Mm-hmm. So people are looking to be social. People are looking to establish like. Relearning what, how to be re- social. Re- 100%. And that's where Especially I was going to go Especially teenagers. Next. Teenagers, yeah. they haven't been social for the past two years. It's important that they learn how to do that just for their development. And mm-hmm. so encouraging, I, I would I would actually challenge us to encourage social events and social outings and even Christmas parties, but doing so in a way that's going to be safe for everybody involved and having just open and honest communication about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I promise it'll be better in the long run. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So yeah, like Christmas parties, the New Year's Eve parties that are going to be coming up very, very soon within a couple of days. Mm-hmm. Um, just talk about it. It's not a scary thing. All, it's all everything's good and the same like i had said with the mistletoe you know kiss yeah. at midnight you know yeah. again cultural thing doesn't have to happen i have been there where everybody's kissing and i'm not you know and same with champagne champagne was you know being handed around and i was like i took a glass and like you can take a glass it doesn't mean you have to drink it either Right. Yeah. You know, I took a sip and I was like, oh, this is disgusting. I don't like champagne. Learned that. Great. But, you know, and then that that's it. Right. Like you don't have to. In, just and because even, everybody else is doing it doesn't mean that you have to. From a bit of a different perspective, too, like we're talking a lot about kind of like teen parties and like drinking and consent and different things. Yeah. But even like holidays often mean family get togethers. And those aren't always yeah, that's important super fun and cheery right there's sometimes a lot of hurt within families and 
but it's Christmas time or New Year, so you have to go and put on a face like everyone likes each other and mm-hmm. there hasn't been any hurt. But especially like with your teens, if they've come to me like, hey, like I've been really hurt by something that this person in my family did, like acknowledging that and be like, yeah, you don't have to pretend that nothing has happened. And like, how can I help you set boundaries? Whether that means giving them the permission to not go to that function yeah, or to have like a signal or a safe word to be like, hey, like I came, I tried, but like, this is too much and I got to go and not forcing that narrative of the perfect family dinner, right? Just because mm-hmm. it's the holidays. Yeah. And I think that's, that leads us good into our next, and our final question of like the difference between like doing because it's the holidays and just like doing things and being. Mm-hmm. Like it's such uh, the Christmas time in this Advent season, it's such a, a, a wonderful opportunity for us to slow down instead of speed up. It's such a wonderful opportunity for us to like, take a breath and and not buy into all of the, the mania like we were talking about. Um, and the question that we have is like, with all the stress that comes with the holiday season, how can people move from the doing mindset? And the doing mindset is like, have to accomplish this task, have to go to this family event, have to get these Christmas items, have to buy this dinner for the for New Year's or, or, or for, you know, yeah, we, we just celebrated Christmas. So like for, for New Year's and all the things that come with you know like new year's resolutions and mm-hmm. all of and we'll be talking about that next next uh <laughs> next time it's gonna be great um but a being mindset how can i just be present in this moment how can i take uh a few minutes to just sit back and and be present with myself and and one of the great ways and tools that people can do that um it's actually uh uh uh, you can call it meditative, devotional, prayerful uh, uh, exercise where you just take five minutes and be still and think about one thing that you can see, one thing that you can touch, one thing that you can hear, one thing that you can taste, and one thing that you can smell. And just take about five minutes just to kind of get reacquainted with 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 where you are and what you're doing. Um, and a lot of times what I would do in this practice is I would, I would find a Psalm. A lot of times I would go to just like Psalm 23 or, or, or a favorite scripture and I'd open that scripture and I'd read that scripture and then I'd sit back and I'd go through, okay, let me include all of my five senses into this spiritual practice. And then I'd breathe out and then I'd read the scripture again. And it was just a way to like be present in that moment and invite the Holy Spirit to also be present in that moment with you which is all about what the th- this holiday season right is about it's like god with us emmanuel the 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 idea that we are not going through this life by ourselves that we are not going through this life as just solitary creatures we're, we are actually designed i believe to be in community yeah. with one another and with the spirit of god mm-hmm. and a practice like that um that, that I would encourage, you know, parents, educators, youth pastors, if you're listening, to share and not to be afraid to, like, tap into some of those things um, and teach teenagers to tap into those things um, because it just allows them to be present and kind of calms yeah. all of that mania that can be and stress that can come. And, like, stress stress isn't just for adults. Like, teenagers, <laughs> they have stress. Um, yeah. This is a great way to kind of... Well, Focus in. I think, too, just like we've been talking about, you know, having that conversation with your kids and, and your teenagers and your spouses and your family. Like what worked this Christmas? What didn't mm-hmm. work this Christmas? You know, what yeah. did you really love about how we spent Christmas this year? What did you not like? What do you not want to do again? Yeah. Right. Like yeah. taking that time in between Christmas and, and New Year's where we are right now as you're preparing for the new year and what's coming, you know, and looking back at the year um, and just having that open conversation with your family and Mm -hmm. just say like, Hey, how did you, and you can go beyond Christmas, right? You can say like the busyness of our lives. Did you like that? Do you want to be more involved? (laughs) Do you want to be less involved? Do you want to do more, be more right? And just again, having that like open conversation, um, and reflective practice um, as we go into the new year. Yeah, one thing um, we did one year growing up was for Christmas to kind of help take away from some of the pressure of, oh, you have to go buy gifts and we're already so busy and you have to get gifts for this person and this person and this person. Within um, my immediate family, 
we did like a secret Santa draw. So you drew mm. one person's name. So you only kind of had to figure out one person's gift. Um, and then I think we either made it like a five, $10 limit or you could make something for the person. So it was like actually one of like the funner Christmases I think we did because there wasn't the pressure of like, oh, I need to go find something for this person and this person, and this person. But you could kind of like, okay, I have one person and I can make them something or like try and find something like small and meaningful and not put the pressure on like, oh, well, we need to get gifts and more and figure out all this stuff but just kind of like hey what's one thing i can do that this person would appreciate i think i made my dad like his favorite cookies yeah and it was great like just mm -hmm. those small little things that we can implement mm -hmm. it that's that's so good yeah and again it goes back to like creating memories mm -hmm. and like having that space and and creating space um a last activity suggestion tool that you guys can use is a lot of times as we're coming to the close of the year, getting going into a new year, one of the rhythms that we can do that I think is so helpful and so valuable, especially with our teens and to teach them to get into this rhythm is like, take some time and take a piece of paper, draw a line down the middle and say in this, this year, what are things that I should celebrate? What are the celebrations that I've had this mm -hmm. year? And on the other side, what are the what are the losses that I've had yeah. this year? Mm -hmm. And then just sit and listen to them as they give that list. And if you want to be really bold, share your own. Mm. Like this is something that I've celebrated with. This is something for us to celebrate as a family this year. Mm -hmm. This is for something maybe that we need to grieve or like to understand and like register. Oh, okay, this was a loss. Um, mm. And doing that builds a relationship where everybody involved feels hurt everybody involved feels like they're what they experienced <laughs> over the past year is legitimate and it's yeah. true and it's honest and it just sets us up for a great uh uh, uh kind of a close and an ending um as we close this holiday season and we prepare to go into the next one great exercise i definitely recommend it i might try that one it's a good one cass you have good ideas, Carl. Sometimes. 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 <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> well, I think that's all the time we have. Um, we want to thank our lovely Sarah Gilman for coming on the show. Thank oh, you so thank much. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Of course. Every time. Every time. Um, if you guys liked this podcast, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, hit the bell, all the wonderful things. Comment. That, comment. Tell a friend. Tell a friend. You know, give the gift that keeps on giving. It's great. <laughs> I said that last time. It didn't land. I don't think it landed this time either. No. But we'll scratch it. We'll, we'll take it. Yeah. One of the things that I grieve for this year is to keep the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> I maybe <laughs> set a New Year's resolution to listen to the podcast every second and fourth Monday of the month. Look there at you, you plugging the podcast. Hey. It's almost as if you work at the Atwell Center. Oh yeah, gosh. almost. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was, this has been awesome. I hope you guys have had a lovely, lovely Christmas and we will see you in the new year. So again, thank you for joining us and don't, don't forget, forget to, to share. share.